Amen. What's his name? His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we should rejoice in the Lord. We should rejoice in our God of our salvation. Because surely our God is good. He's a great God. He's greatly to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down, the Lord's name is to be praised. So we praise God and thank God. On our teleconference, we thank God for giving us another day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for one more day. Thank you for life. Thank you for hope. Thank you for peace. Thank you for forgiveness of sins. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the love that you have showed and expressed to us. Praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to our teleconference. God bless you for joining us today. We want to glorify God. We want to bless the name of the Lord because his name is worthy to be praised. We thank him for so many blessings that he had, that we have derived from his hands. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. So we want to name the blessings of the Lord. And we want to thank him for every blessing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Today we're going to go into our topic. And our topic is a continuation Faith and favor with God. Faith and favor with God. We have to, you know, have faith in God. But before I start, let me have a short prayer. Father, we thank you. Father, we praise you. Father, we glorify you. We magnify your name. Your name is to be praised. Thank you, Jesus, because you are a good God. You are a loving God. You are a merciful God. You are a God of forgiveness, Lord God, and I pray that you will bless us and sanctify us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us all our shortcomings and sins and imperfection. Have mercy upon us, Lord. We look to you for a blessing. Take control of this teleconference, and I pray you will lead us in the way you want us to go, and we give you praise and we give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. So God bless you, my brethren, and we're going to go into a topic again, and this is a part two of last week. We had part one of faith and favor with God. Faith and favor with God. We know the Bible says without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please God. So one of our essence of our, of our life, and our journey is to have faith in God, is to trust in God at all times, is to lean on Him and not on our own understanding, is to trust Him and anything that we ask the Lord for, just believe, number one, that He hears us, and number two, that He will answer, because the Lord Jesus, our Lord and our God, is not like any other God that men worship and men serve, but he's a true and living God. He's a God of life, he's a God of hope, he's a God of peace. He's a God of everything. He is why we are alive today. He is why we breathe the breath of life. And without him, we would have no life. Without him, we would have no hope. So we're looking at how we can connect with God. How do we connect with the Almighty God? How do we connect with the one true and living God? The true and living God who is ever-present, omnipresent, present everywhere, omnipotent, is all-powerful. All power belongs to God. Omni omnipresent, omnipotent, and omniscient, omniscient, knowing all things. So that's the kind of God we serve, and we have to acknowledge that He is what He is. We cannot comprehend everything concerning God. We do, we do not have the full comprehension of what God is. 
we can only see God through the eyes of faith. The eyes of faith, that's the only way we can perceive God. And so that's why it is important that we have faith. Because faith is believing in something that we can't see. You know, faith is a substance of things that we can't see. So it is so important part of our life and our walk with God to have faith in Him. Not in some things, but in all things. And last week we were talking about Abraham, the patriot, whose name was Abraham, but God renamed him and gave him another name, Abraham. And we, talk, we, we read and talked about how God tested Abraham and said to Abraham, take your one son, the one son that he had and the one son that he loved. And God said, take him and offer him upon the mount. I will show you and offer him as a sacrifice. And God tested Abraham because he knew the man that Abraham was. The part about faith is that he trusted in God. He didn't know what would happen, but he knew whatever God said was right. And he knew all he needed to do was obey the voice of God. And so he did obey the voice of God and took his one son up on the mount to offer him as a sacrifice and we see that he did everything according to what told God told him to do laid the wood in order put his son on the, on the wood bind him and raise the knife was to kill his own son Isaac and God spoke to him from heaven said Abraham he said here I am and the voice said lay not your hand upon that child. That's how faith is. That's how faith is. Just believing, walking in the word of God, trusting in the word of God, obeying the word of God. That, that is faith. Jesus said to his disciples when he said, I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. And we have to believe that no matter what situation or circumstances we find ourselves in, we have to believe that God is standing by. God is standing by to hear our faintest cry. And all we need to do is look to Him. We need to remember that He is God. Remember that He has the power. Remember that He is God and He has he has what it takes to deliver us from every situation. He, is, he has the power to forgive us of our shortcomings and imperfection. He has the power to provide for us those things that we cannot provide for ourselves. He is there to open doors for us, doors that we cannot open. Because we have to realize that as man, we are limited. Our limit, our limitation is, is, is quite visible in every sense of the word. We have nothing without God. We are nothing without Him. We achieve nothing without Him. We aspire not without Him. So we have to realize that He is the Lord of all. And so when we realize that we put our trust in Him and not in our own understanding. So... As we look at Abraham last week, we're going to look at the patriot um, Job. Job was known for his faith in God, unrelenting, unrelenting. He would not let go. He would not give up. He would not turn his, his, his back on God, no matter what happened to him. And if we're going to read the story of Job and we see what Job went through in his life and we see how he his attitude towards what his pain is sorry his suffering we can see his lost and all the things that happened to him we can look and see how he behaved 
in adverse circumstances. So I'm going to start to read from Job chapter 1. I'm going to read the whole chapter so we can understand what he was going through and what he experienced and what caused him to be in the state he was in and how we will look later on how God bring him out. So I'm going to read chapter, Job chapter 1. I'm going to read all the verses down. Job chapter 1, it says, There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was a perfect and upright, and the one that feared God and extruous evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was seven thousand sheep, and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred she asses, and a very great household, so that this man was greatest in all the men of the east. And his son went and f feasted in their houses, every one this day, and sent and called their three sisters, and eat and drink with them. And it was so when the days of their fasting was gone about that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And Job, he does, did Job continually. Now there was a day when the sons of God came present themselves before God, before the Lord, and Satan came among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and extruth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Do it, Job, Fear God for naught. Hast thou not made a hedge about him and about his house and all that he has on every side? Hast thou blessed the work of his hands and his substance is increased in the land? But put forth your hand now and touch all that he hath and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath in thy power is in thy power. Only upon himself put forth, put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the elder brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were ploughing and the asses feeding beside them, and the sea being fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped and, uh, and alone with thee. While he was yet speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God fallen from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only am alone. I, on, I escape only to tell thee. While he was there speaking, there came another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and carried them away. Yea, they slay the servant with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped to tell thee. 
While he was yet speaking there, came another and said, Thy sons and daughters were eating and drinking in the elder brother's house, and behold, there came wind from the wilderness and smote the front corners of the hut and fell on the young men, and they are dead, and only I am escaped to tell thee. Then Job rose, arose and went his mantle, shaved his head, fell down on the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Amen. Praise the Lord. A very interesting story is this story of Job, a man who was a perfect in the sight of God, who did everything to please him to God, who served God, who feared God, who extruded hate evil, who was a righteous man in his own right. He was a man who would think, pray continually, continually communicate with God, continually serving God and worshipping God, offering sacrifice as it was in those days for the sins of his children. He said he, he was a man that was perfect and upright. He was doing everything to please God in his life. He was just wanted to serve God. And he said, Scripture said he had seven sons and three daughters. So he had ten children. And imagine he had everything that life could wish. And I think he was quite comfortable with everything that he had, that he inherited. The Bible said the substance was seven, 7,000 sheep. That's a lot of sheep. 3,000 camels. 500 yoke of oxen. 500 cows. And 500 she asses. And a great household. So he had a family that people, he had servants, he, has, he had everything. We could see that Job was a man who, with what substance he had, could live an easy life. Because he didn't have to worry about tomorrow. He didn't have to worry about anything sub financial or anything. He, did. he had everything. He was, you know, sometimes when people are well satisfied with life, they forget about God. But Job had everything he needed, more than he needed, a great substance. But yet he did not forget God. So sometimes people look and see that they have, you know, they are very rich and they're very wealthy. And their mind and heart goes out to their wealth and goes out to their possession. And all they spend their time is trying to hold on to their possession or increase their wealth. That's, that's the mind of man. But Job was a separate man who mind, no matter what substance he had, no matter how wealthy he was, no matter how, how blessed he was, and how he felt comfortable in his own life, in his own life, in, in his own right, he had God. He put God first. And so because he put God first, he worshipped God continually. He wanted to, he worked to please God. He lived to please God. He lived to serve God. He lived to obey God. He's a perfect man. Just the way God wanted us all to be like man, like Job. Not to concentrate, amen, bless you. Not to concentrate on our substance, but to concentrate, to see him for what he is. And to realize that everything that we have, comes from him. If you just join us, we are reading from Job chapter 1 um, and the story of Job. Our topic is um, faith and favor with God. So I'm on to verse 4 when it says, 
um, the son went and feast in their own house, in their house, everyone, everyone his day, and sent and called for the three sisters. So all these ten children had time when they went and feast, enjoy themselves, have, as we say, have fun, you know, eat, drink, and, you know, rejoice in their own self, you know, not... And so it says, it was so that when the days of their feasting was gone about, Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be my son have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. And did, did, this dusty Job continued. So basically Job saw that his son was feasting, having enjoying himself and obviously in drinking wine, and eating and having feast, they, they, their mind is not on God, their mind is on their eating and their drinking and their, you know, having their fun or whatever. So Job see that they may not be doing the will of God, they may not be pleasing to God. So the, the Bible says that Job sent and sanctified them, pray, pray for them. And he rose up early in the morning and offered burnt sacrifice. You know, sometimes we have children and sometimes we don't know what our children is doing. But our duty is to pray for them. Our duty is to call their name before God continually. Because we don't know what the devil is doing and leading them into. So this was like Job now. Job said, let me sanctify them. And let me offer burnt offering. In those days, they offer burnt offering. Now what we do, we pray for our children when we don't know what they're up to, but we pray to God that God will touch them, visit them, lead them, control their mind and let them not stray away from God. This is what Job wants. Job wanted his children to be like him. He would like to be a man, a perfect, he wanted them to be perfect and upright. That's what he wanted. So he offered burnt offering to God for them. And it says, this Job, he did continually. And we should continually, when we have children, pray for them. Ask God to have mercy upon them. Have God to forgive them. Have God, ask God to lead them. And these things, the devil don't like. You know, we have children, we, if we, the devil is happy that we forget about them in our prayers, but our duty is to pray for our children and our loved ones. Pray for them continually. It says, does this Job did this continually, continually. We must not stop praying for our children. But this is all how we prove God. And it says, now there was a day when the sons of God came. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. See how it is. When we come together <laughs> to, to worship the Lord and praise the Lord, the Bible says that Satan was, came among them. The sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Satan came there too. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? So, you know, people say, don't believe that there is a devil, but we can see the devil and we can see the intention of the devil. The Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro the earth and walking up and down in it. There is a devil. You know there's a devil, an evil one. And he comes around to do nothing but, as the Bible said, to kill, steal, and destroy. The devil has a job to do. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what Jesus says. And we could see, even way back before Jesus came. Look at the plan of the devil now as we read the story of Job. Look at the plan of the devil. 
the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Because <laughs> God knows everything. You know if the devil comes, you know what his intention of the devil. God knows the intention of the devil. God knows his intention, as I said, to kill, steal, and destroy. He come to do some evil. He never come. He can't do any good. The devil cannot do anything good. The, it is impossible for the devil to do good. So God, being the all omniscient God, knowing everything, know what Satan came about when he came, when the children of God were present and he presented himself. God know him come for some mischief, some evil. So God knew that Satan was looking at Job. And he was looking at Job because Job was a perfect man. He don't like God don't like we, people who try to be good and who try to be right up upright and try to obey God. God don't the Satan don't like people who try to serve, want to serve God. He he don't like that. He don't like people who pray. He don't like people who worship. He don't like and he don't like people who talk about God or anything like that. He wants to take everyone away from the living God. So God said, the Lord said to Satan, Has thou considered my servant good Job? God knew that the devil was thinking about Job. What can I do to destroy this man? Because this man, he wanted to destroy Job because Job was perfect. And because Job was righteous. He wanted to destroy him because he don't like righteousness. He don't like a man who tried to live pleasing to God. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Do it, Job, fear God for naught. So he's saying there's a reason. There's a, there's a reason why... Job was serving God. There's a reason why Job was being a perfect man and avoiding evil, eschewing evil. He, he thought there was a reason for that. So he said to God, this is the devil himself, Satan, talking to God. He says, has, thou, has, thou, has not thou made a hedge about him? And about his house, and about all that he hath on every side. Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. What an evil, evil thing that is, devil. What an evil thing. So he's saying to God, Satan is saying to God, does Job fear God for naught? In other words, he's saying, oh, because you've given him all this substance, because you have given him um, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of ox, 500 she asses, and a great household. And you have made him the greatest man in all the East. This is why he fear you. This is what Satan is telling God. But he's just tempting God. He wanted to destroy Job. But because God is God and he knew Job, he knew he could trust in Job. He knew what was in the heart of Job. Satan didn't know. And even if he knew, he didn't care. All he wanted to do destroy a righteous man. And so sometimes when we go through things in life, it's just the devil fighting us. And God allowed the devil to go so far. But there's a limit that the devil cannot go beyond. So no matter what happened to us, remember that God limit the devil. He limit what he can do. But he knows what we can bear. He he knows our inner strength. He knows our determination. He knows our resistance. He knows the love that we have for him and how much we can bear. Because God knew how much Job was able to bear. God said, Satan said, he has made a, a hedge around him. 
and around his house and how all about him on every side and that was blessed the work of his hands satan said to god put forth your hand now and touch him all that he has and he will curse you in other words take away all the substance that's what they will say take away all the substance everything you give him take away everything you give him, and see see if he will curse you to your face this is a devil and he does it to every one of us. He tried on every one of us. He is the accuser of all our brethren. He accuses us for everything. Everything he's he's a he is like an accuser. So he was accusing Job of being comfortable, and because he's comfortable, that's why he's serving God. But he said to he said to God, put forth your hand and touch him. In other words, the devil is telling God, take away all, all those substance you give him. Take away everything and see if, he will curse, see if he won't curse you to your face. And the Lord knew Job. And now God, God knew, knew us. God knew Job. God said to Satan, God said to Satan, the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that ye have is in thy power only upon himself put not forth thine hand so satan went forth from the presence of the lord so the lord said to the devil to satan okay all that he has all his substance you have power over his substance but on himself he don't have no power so it tells us that God limit what the devil can do to us. This is why we should not fear anything because the devil can't do anything to us unless God gave him the authority. The devil can do nothing to us unless God gave him the authority. God gave the devil authority over the substance, the substance that Job had. All his cattle and his, um, his, his camels and his shears and his, go and, his, and his oxen and everything, God gave him, the devil, authority over them. And the devil did not waste any time. The Bible says, Satan went from the presence of the Lord. What does he go for? God gave him authority. He goes to kill, steal, and destroy. The Bible is never wrong, you know, brethren. The Bible is never wrong. The devil went out from the presence of the Lord to kill, steal, and destroy. And we look at verse 13 in Job chapter 1. And here comes trouble. All the devil ever do now is give trouble. From the beginning of creation, from God created Adam and Eve, all the devil has been doing is to give trouble. And every side is trouble. So God give him authority, give him power over the substance of Job. Satan went straight away. Start his destruction. Verse 13 says, There was one day, there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking in their elder brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the ass was feeding beside them. And the sea beans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, and they have slain thy servant at the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped to tell thee. That is the role of the devil, brethren. That is the role of the devil. Nothing was wrong with what Job was doing. He was doing everything in the eyes of God, but the devil didn't like it. And as soon as God allow him, give, loose, give him authority over his substance, he started to kill. So the CBNs, it says uh, there was a tribe of people from Africa, I think it's Baswana, somewhere in Africa, the Sibians were. 
It was men that came and fell upon the asses that were feeding and took them away, took away the asses and killed all the servant of Job who was attending to those asses and oxen, took, killed them by the sword and took away all his asses and oxen. This is how devil work. When we see war going on around the world, we, have no, we don't need to doubt who's behind it. Satan is behind it. Every war that goes on, it's the devil's behind it. So he calls the CBNs who came up and took away the oxen that were plowing and the asses and kill all the servants at the edge of the sword. And they allow one was the devil allow one to escape. Because he said, I only am escaped to tell thee. The devil allow one to escape to tell Job what has happened. And then further on, as he while he was speaking, it says while he was speaking, so the devil never wasted any time to start destroying right, left, and center. While he was speaking, there came another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and has burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I only have left to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, came another and said, the Chaldeans, that's another tribe that came out of the band and fell upon the camels and carried them away and slay that servant by the edge of the sword and I only have escaped to tell thee. You know, sometimes we think things can never get worse until it gets worse. In verse 18, while he was yet speaking, there came another and said, Thy sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the elder brother's house, and behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the earth, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only had escaped to tell thee, My Lord. Can you imagine how Job uh, felt when he heard all these bad news? Bad news. One after the other. Sometimes we, we feel ourselves in situations sometimes when all we are hearing is bad news, bad news, bad news. Nothing coming out of the servant as Job mouth was all bad news. Everything was just bad news. And there was just one escape. Always there's just one escape to tell the bad news. There's always just one escape to tell the bad news. So it went on to say, and then Job arose. After, he, after Job hear all this bad news coming out from all his, his servants that had escaped the terror. When he hear all this bad news, I, I can you imagine how he must have felt. I think disappointing may be a simple, may, may not be, disappointing may not cover, but you can imagine how we must have felt to know that in a short space of time, everything that he had was taken, destroyed, and killed. Everything he had in a short space of time. And in verse 20 says, Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the ground and worship. This is all about faith, brethren. This is all about faith and this is all about how we exercise faith in the time, in the time of adversities. This is how we as children of God have to exercise faith in the time of adversities. There could not at that time be a greater sense of adversities. There could not be a, a greater time of disappointment, of lost, 
of feeling empty. There couldn't be a greater time. You could not hard to measure how Job could have felt at this time when everything he had was taken away. Everything. And the Bible says, he rose, arose, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down on the ground and worshipped. That's what God wants us to do. Now Job said, Naked, I, I came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. How great is that? How wonderful is that? That you've lost everything. You know, in this life, be, I've known people who have been disappointed in that they they lost their old property, they lost their possession, and you know, many people are really have tur turned crazy because they've lost everything because they put their heart in their possession. And when many people lost their possession, they've changed, they've become crazy in all sorts of things because they've lost everything. But Job did not put his heart in his substance. This is what this story tells us. Job did not put his heart in his substance. Okay, it was good for him to be have all the substance that he had and his ten children. He, he was good for him. He felt comfortably, felt happy. But his, his heart was with God. His heart was with the Lord. His, he, he realized that without God, he would be nothing. He realized that God gave him life. He realized that, you know, he says that naked I came out of the womb, which is true. And naked I shall return hither, which is true. When we are born, we are born with nothing. We are then born with shoes or clothes or anything. We're born naked. But we have to realize that whatever we achieve in this world, whatever, how God has blessed us, regardless of all the blessings that God has given us, uh, that we have, we have to remember it's God who gave it to us. Our loved ones, our friends, our possession, our achievement. We have to realize everything that we possess in this world is God give us. When we realize that we did not achieve anything by ourselves, but it was the gift of God, we can say what Job said. The Lord give and the Lord take it away. Blessed it be the name of the Lord. Some of us, unfortunately, have lost loved ones. Loved ones very close to us. And um, it's hard. It's painful. If we have at any time lo lost a loved one that is so close to us, it is hard. Our heart is so bitter. We can't even think straight. We don't even realize that that loved one that we had for 10, 20, 30, 40 years, it was a gift from God. It was nothing that we, we did to have that love. It was a gift from God. If You know, if we have children or mother or whatever, we have any relation that we're close to and they're taken away from us. We should not grieve. We should say, as Job, the Lord give and the Lord take it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. This is an attitude of faith that God wants us to have. An attitude of faith. An attitude of realizing that we have got nothing. We have achieved nothing by ourselves. It is the gift of God. It's the blessings of God. And even though the devil tried to get... What the devil really wanted was for, for, for Job to curse God. That's all, that's all the devil wanted. 
all the devil wanted was for Job to curse God. Further on, we can see when his wife, when Job's wife, see the sorrows, the pain, because this is just part of the story. We have to go to the other part of the story where the devil was not satisfied with just taking away his possession. The devil wanted more. And if we read on, we will see how the devil wanted God to actually kill Job. Actually. Actually kill Job. This is the devil. So we have to realize that in this life, the devil is working against us. And we have to realize that God is on our side. And that's the good thing. The good thing is that God is on our side. The devil wants to destroy us, but the good thing is that God is our defender. The Bible says the Lord is my refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I fear? When we realize that the Lord is on our side, the devil can't harm us. God will limit the devil how much, how far he can go. And all we need to do is trust in the Lord. The Bible says, Job said, Naked I come out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there, hither. Naked. We will go back to the grave. The Lord gave and the Lord take it away. We will go out of this life naked, just as we came in. Naked means that we will have nothing. We will, we, we will leave this life with nothing. We came with nothing and we will leave with nothing. So the attitude that Job had was to thank God in all the circumstances he found himself because he knew that God was good. And that's why he served God. It says in all this, in all this, Job sinned not. In all this, in all that he went through, he sinned not, not charged God foolishly. And that is faith. And because of that faith that Job had, he had favor with God. Brethren, we can have favor with God. We can have favor with God. We only need to trust Him. We only need to rely on Him, knowing that He is on our side. God is on our side. The devil wants to destroy us. That the, He from the beginning, from Adam, all the way through, all the devil wants to do is to destroy us. He has destroyed the plan of God. God made this world beautiful. God gave us everything. He said to Adam, of all the food that is in the garden, thou shalt freely eat. But of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. That's, that's all God was asking. That's, that is all God was asking Adam to do. One little thing. Nothing else. God didn't give Adam ten commandments. He just gave him one and because Adam disobeyed that one commandment, God had to give us ten. So just from one commandment to ten commandment, and it goes on and on, and the devil has infiltrated the whole world and every side, and his plan is to kill, steal, and destroy. That's all the devil has for us. That's all his plans for us, to kill, steal, and destroy. But let us be a Job. Let us remember that we bought nothing in this world, and we will live with nothing. So everything that we achieve in this world comes from God. And when we realize that everything that we have in this life comes from God, we can say as Job, the Lord give it, and the Lord take it away. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. God bless you, my brethren. We come to the end of our teleconference. It was. I hope you are blessed, and um, I hope it challenges us to trust in God. It's a challenge for us to trust in God, and let us remember that the devil cannot do anything to us unless God allow him to do it. And God will not put more on us than we can bear because our God is God, loving and kind, merciful, forgiving. God bless you. I'm going to cut off here. I'm going to allow. welcome to Sister McLean. God bless you. Um, always nice to see you and to hear from you. So I'm going to turn over to you now, Sister Mac. And give us a short word before we maybe see if Pastor Winston wants to join us. Um, he speaks of God bless you, Sister McLean. God bless you to Minister Johnson. Amen. I just want to greet. Amen. I won't be long. I just want to greet the Holy Spirit, which is the head of my life. Greet you, Minister Thompson, Sister Thompson, Pastor McLean on all God's people who are on this okay. platform this evening. I just want to greet you well. And just want to say God is good. We serve a God who is uh, from everlasting to everlasting, one that never fails. And you know, I came, I came on late, but as I was listening uh, um, almost at the end of it, your sermon, Brother Thompson, he was speaking about Job, the fate of Job. And Job was a really a man of faith, you know. And I don't believe we'll find another person like Job. Amen. Because Job was tested by the devil, but God has given the permission God has given faith and the permission because you know what? God knows Job's heart. You know? And even at that point when his um is what six daughters and three sons, six sons, all his children died, his cattle died, everything leave him. He stand alone. He broke out in sores and boils. That even when his friends came. They were accusing him wrongfully. So sometimes when we are going through some predicament and some things is happening to us, people who do not understand, even our own brethren, will, will accuse us, say it must be something that you have done wrong. Why this happened to you or why that happened and why this is not going right and that. But it doesn't have to be so because Job didn't do anything wrong. Job was a man of God. He holds on to his integrity. Even when his wife said, curse God and die. He said, you speak as one of a foolish woman. You know, and as in the last verse he said, and all this Job sinned not. He never sinned and he did not charge God foolishly. Some of us, because one time I was listening to this young lady, uh, he was reading a book about it as well. He said that our father died, I think our mom died, and they leave them small, and you know, they, read, they blame God for it, mm -hmm. you know? But so foolishly, Job did not blame God. Job mm -hmm. hold on to his integrity, you know? And he said, he, um, all my appointed time, I'm going to wait mm -hmm. until my change comes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, sometimes we go through so many things, you know, in the natural. But it's to build us up. Mm -hmm. You know, God want to, God want to use us in a, a certain way. So we have been tried. We have been tested. God, God test us and see if we can stand the test, you know. Because uh, I'm telling you, um, even now, I'm facing a mountain. And you know how long I've been praying and praying. And sometimes I felt as if, oh, God is far away from me. I could remember one morning I was praying. 
And you know what the devil said to me? So God not answering my prayer. But I know that God is answering my prayer. I'm just going to stay next in line for my blessing. Because God Amen. cannot lie. You know, Amen. I have to wait, up, wait upon him. Because I know, it, you know, his timing and my timing is not the same. You know, right. so we have to depend on the Lord and wait upon the Lord. You know, because there are many battles, sir, there are many fights. You know, we as Christians, especially in these last days, we have been tried, we have been tested, we have been tempted. And so we have to be strong and be of good courage. Amen. And as Ephesians 6 said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and Amen. in the power of his might. And let us put on the whole armor. Amen. Over from our head to our feet. Because we are in a spiritual battle where the devil is not backing down. He's fierce. Yes. But Amen. He's a loser. But yes, let us is. hold on to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean Amen. not on our own understanding. And in all our ways, let us acknowledge Him and He will direct our path. The Lord bless you all. It's my few words in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, Sister McLean, and God bless you, a woman of faith. We thank God for you and thank God for your word of encouragement. We just have to trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Amen. He never fails. He is the God of our salvation. I'm glad to have also Sister Rose. God bless you, Sister Rose, for joining us. And um, we'd like to hear a few words from you. God bless yes, you. I, what, I, what, I, what I take from the story of Job every time, the first thing is Job's character. Because in every one of us, there is a character. And the character of the person, he's the person. In the first, the first verse was the character of the man. The man was a perfect man. And sometimes you have people, they are very gifted. And they are going nowhere. Because the gift is put into a character and the character doesn't live up to the gift. Mm -hmm. No, Job was a man of strong character. He was a man who feared God. Yes. And if your character, if your character doesn't match up with the principles of God, you are going to fail day and night and night and day. Mm. The first thing that Job did was to pray for his children. Yes. When you're a person of God and you want people to mirror something, you have to model it. Job model uprightness. Job model love. Because charity begins at home. And the man first, he prayed for his children. Yes. Now, what Job did, sometimes, brother Thompson and brethren, you have children, and you are supposed to be a person of God. And your children ain't. Your children is far from God. But Job exercised the first thing, which was the right thing, is to pray for his children. And catastrophe followed. Five things happened in one day. Mm -hmm. And Job did not budge because the man's character was firm in God. And God knew Job. That's why he allowed Satan to do all of this. Yes. Because God, God knew the man. God knew the man. And Brother Thompson, if our character matches up with the things of God, it doesn't matter what the devil throws at you, you come back strong. Because Job was a perfect man, and he modeled Christianity. He modeled uprightness. He modeled uprightness. And once he modeled it, and God saw who he was, and God knew the character of the man, the man shares it here. To represent mourning. He ripped up his mantle and he went down and he worshipped God. That was the character of the man. The man was a worshipper. Not from his mouth, but from his behavior, his deeds, and his actions. From his heart. From his heart. Yes. And brethren, I tell you, 
just as long as your character is right with God, it doesn't matter what comes, you will stand for Jesus Christ. Once you are with Christ and Christ is with you, you model Christ Christianity all the time. Mm -hmm. And that is so was. He was a man with a character of God. And once you are with God, it is so hard for you to shift from God. Mm -hmm. It is very hard to do something when your character is embedded in God. And it is embedded in righteousness. You might make a mistake. You hurry up and you correct it. But once you are embedded with God, my brother, nothing that comes your way can shift you. Because you are anchor in Jesus Christ. The Lord Root bless you. Him. Rooted and grounded. Amen. Every time. Every time. So your character. Your character is you. Your character is you. And some of us, we have got a gift, but we got no character. And we go nowhere in Jesus. As long as your character is in God, you cannot fail. You cannot. You just cannot fail. So be strong and be happy and be courageous. Amen. 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 God bless you, sister. Amen. God bless you, sister Rose. God bless you. Indeed. Character is very important. We need to have the right character. Character is you. Yes, yes. That's why the Bible says that mind that was in Christ Jesus, that same mind in Philippians, it says, let the right. mind yes. be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Because, you know, Jesus' character was perfect. He, you know, yep. that's, a, that's what we need to follow, the character of Jesus. He was perfect. That's right. He did everything right. pleasing to his Father, to God. That's right. He, he that's obeyed right. everything that God wanted. He did not move to the right, not to the left. And, you know, so that's character right. is right. so that's important. Right. We have to have that godly character. And the Bible says, you must, let you this, must, you must. hallelujah. That character is important. And but one with compassion, one with love. We can't have, and right faith, it. love, yes. faith, yes. you know, is a very important part. And they're fruits, the Bible says they are fruits, that we, we as children of God must have these fruits, because a yes. tree is known by its fruits, and faith right. is an essential part of our character. Yes. We, can't, we, don't, yes. we don't have the character with God without faith. And, you yes. know, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11 tells us about all the things that faith does did to the patriots right. and to the prophets right down to us right now because we right cannot now. please God without faith so let us be faithful to the Lord yep. and you know yep. trust in him and stand for him no matter what the circumstances Amen. you know Amen. we must see our salvation you know whether whether the road is rough whether the road is tough Jesus mm -hmm. will see us true he saw Daniel chew with the lions, then he saw the Hebrews brought through the fire. So many stories we can talk about what God has done. He's the same. He's the same. He says, I am the Lord, I change not. He's an unchanging God. He's the same God. What he did for those patriots and prophets, he will do for us. So let us stand fast in faith, knowing that our God never fails. Pastor Winston, God bless you. God bless you. God bless Sister you Rose, it's good to have you. God bless you, Sister McLean, Sister God Brina, Sister PT, and my son Delion. God bless you, everyone, and Sister Rose. You, brother, God you bless you. Pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister, Sister Rose, would you like to sing? Uh, would can you sing a song for us? We close now. God bless you all, and I just want to greet you in the mighty name of Jesus, and I feel so encouraged from hearing Brother Thompson, Minister Thompson, my husband, and uh, Sister McLean, as well as Sister Rose, I just feel blessed, and yesterday we went to my beautiful, beautiful niece's wedding, we was all the way up in um, Eastbourne, and God took us there safe and sound, and back safe and sound, so I just want to give him thanks, it was a Christian wedding, and it's so nice to see young people in their early 20s getting married than having boyfriend girlfriend so i'm very proud of my niece and i just give god thanks Amen. and praises i'm just gonna do just do the chorus part of, of this song very quickly then sings my soul my savior god to thee 
How great thou art! How great thou art! Then saves my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art! How great thou art! One more time. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great how great God did me my soul I said we are God to thee how great the heart how great the Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rose. God bless you. How great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. Brethren, we serve a great God. We serve a mighty God. Let us worship Him. Let us praise Him. Let us give Him the praise and the glory. Let us obey his word and serve him in spirit and in truth because he's a great god he's deserve all our praises god bless you um have a wonderful week and may the lord keep you and ca cause his face to shine upon you father we thank you for your love thank you for your mercies thank you for your goodness pray you bless us and keep us cover us under your blood guide us with that uh, protect us from all danger seen and unseen help us to live for you lord and help us to raise our faith in you knowing that lord jesus we are just justified by faith faith hallelujah faith is the victory that overcomes the world and lord help us to have more faith and more faith in you that we may, we may have favor in your presence we give the bless everyone lord keep us guide us and protect us we ask these blessings in jesus name amen amen god bless everyone for joining us may the lord bless and keep you and have a wonderful week in the name of Jesus. God bless you, my son, Delian, and Pastor Winston, and to my clean sister, Brina, sister, Pete, and, and my dear sister, Rose, my dear wife, sister, Rose. God bless you in Jesus' name. God bless you, people. Be blessed and highly favored. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Good night. Bye. God bless. Bye. Bye. Thank you.